Throughout Switzerland, there are countless stories that, if told, could inspire, surprise, disappoint, sometimes cause outrage, and possibly lead to positive change. Such stories can remain unreported for various reasons. One reason is that conventional media is not always receptive to controversy when it disrupts the status quo. Another reason can be fear or lack of support for a storyteller. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Julia Zeidler, interviewer and co-founder of the new Swiss internet platform utel.ch, a storytelling website that presents voices not typically heard, but of interest to us all here in Switzerland. In our first interview, we present an unusual story of how pressure applied through the internet by American lawyers led to unethical, possibly illegal conduct at the University of Basel, and finally to a lawsuit aimed at three professors. How is it that a man described by Interpol as armed and dangerous walks the streets of Switzerland? A man police around the world have been asked to detain for the United States. And what happened at the University of Basel, where he worked as an editor, instructor and initiator of popular science programs for the public, when unfavorable internet information was distributed? Thank you, Ms. Zeidler. I'm happy to be here and I am pleased to be able to tell my story. My name is Mark England. I am a Swiss citizen, a scientist, a writer and an editor. I currently live in Interlaken, Switzerland. Welcome, Mr. England. Please tell our audience about the unusual circumstances surrounding your story. Beginning in 1999, while I lived in the USA, uh, I began writing booklets exposing corruption by American lawyers, police and a judge in a legal case that involved my son in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The publications led to retaliation against me by those lawyers. Under continual legal pressure, I ultimately returned to Switzerland in 2004 after living most of my life in the USA. I won't burden listeners with a long history of American injustice, but I should provide some background information to explain the circumstances in Switzerland today and to address your opening remarks. In 2009, Interpol issued a notice about me based on a request by U.S. Marshals in Milwaukee. Uh, they were acting on behalf of a police chief and a judge whom I was exposing in a new book called The System that went onto the internet. The motivation for the Interpol note was political. The accusations made are meant to distract attention from corruption. The Interpol notice is ignored by Swiss authorities because it has no relevance here and it is probably seen for its uh, clear intent, uh, obfuscation. What evidence can you provide to support your claim that the Interpol warning is politically motivated? People who watch a video by Fox News on the internet see a very different story. Well, the timing of the notice and my location uh, demonstrate this. The notice was not issued until late 2009, but I had been living in Switzerland continually since 2004 in compliance with Swiss law. Previously, there had been no Interpol note and no arrest warrant anywhere. U.S. Marshals labeled me armed and dangerous while I had been living in Switzerland complying with Swiss law and without any such previous history. And what would you say is the motivation for distributing such information? Well, to induce fear of me, to eliminate my credibility and to take the focus off of the serious accusations and evidence that I presented in uh, open publications and also in a short documentary film that I released recently. I would like to offer an example that I think will put into perspective the efforts by Milwaukee lawyers to stop my publications. 
A newspaper article in the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel newspaper reported that an American lawyer, Robert Elliott, asked a judge, Michael Malmstead, in a Milwaukee courtroom to impose penalties of $400 million on me. Now I repeat, $400 million U.S. dollars as punishment for writing booklets critical of a Milwaukee lawyer. This sum was meant to induce Swiss lawyers to put an end to my publications. Now I ask listeners, what fear of my publications would cause a lawyer to make such a preposterous demand, uh, which could in fact be viewed as an attack on the sovereignty of Switzerland through a Milwaukee court? And it's an attack on freedom of speech here. Obviously, what I reveal in publications is held to be of some importance to these Milwaukee lawyers. I present this as evidence of the extent to which Milwaukee lawyers hunt me and the level of desperation as they vilify me in order to silence me. Regarding the Interpol note, have you ever been contacted or warned by any legal or police authorities in any regard at any time since you returned to Switzerland in 2004? No, never. To the contrary. I initiated contact with the authorities. A prosecutor in Switzerland issued an arrest warrant for one of the lawyers involved in my case. I am the accuser. You are accused of threatening an American judge and a police chief. That is an accusation that circulates on the internet. I doubt it would hold up under American law, but the accusation serves its purpose. What I did was in compliance with Swiss law. I have been exposing the same people in publications for 13 years. They are lawyers who specialize in protecting drug dealers and a judge known for protecting police in trouble. They are insiders to the legal system. They are resistant to conviction for crimes, even when there's evidence against them, and they are not impressed by ordinary requests to do the right thing. Did you attempt to use the proper authorities or the legal system back in the USA to correct the wrongdoing before you took action on your own? For years, I tried legal appeals, the Wisconsin Bar Office of Lawyer Regulation, the Ethics Committee, my political representatives, senators, congressmen. I went to the media. I wrote letters to every authority I could think of. Some of this evidence is shown in the documentary film that I recently released. And these various organizations, how did they respond to your requests and appeals? Non-legally related organizations that I contacted informed me that I had to go through the legal system. Within the legal system, the emphasis was on delay and cover-up. My correspondences in this regard are detailed in my book. I should point out, as disturbing as it may sound, that uh, in a supposedly premier democracy like the USA, legal wrongdoing can be close to impossible to redress. My case is almost standard. Lawyers in the legal system have become notorious for never making a mistake and for applying pressure to ensure that mistakes are not revealed. So you applied pressure from Switzerland for the release of evidence that had been intentionally hidden? That's correct. I provided motivating ambiguity within Swiss law. Uh, bear in mind, the issue concerned my son's life. The people I accused were protected by the system. The corruption had remained hidden for years, despite indisputable evidence. I renewed pressure on those people in 2009 because they had succeeded at hiding their illegal conduct. I wanted to provoke them, to reinitiate interest in the story, to gain justice for my son and myself. Evidence that they had hidden would have prevented a false conviction. I would just like to say that threats, as such, can take a legal as well as an illegal form. I cleared my strategy with Swiss authorities in advance of communicating with that judge and with the police chief. Did Swiss authorities ask you anything about your case, 
ask for any evidence or proof. In fact, Swiss authorities were apprised of my circumstances even before the matter began in 1996 because my son is a Swiss citizen. I had asked them for help. While I was in the USA, a Swiss representative visited me. I told him the story, but a foreign government is powerless to influence the internal USA legal system. What exactly do you mean when you say you had your strategy cleared in advance here in Switzerland? By whom and how? I should first emphasize that Interpol takes the information directly from U.S. Marshals in Milwaukee. I informed Swiss authorities that corruption by a police chief and a judge had led to legal violations and false accusations against me and had separated me from my son. I sent a registered letter to the authorities explaining what I intended to do and the forceful language that I intended to use to gain the truth and exonerate myself. I was informed by letter that I would not be violating Swiss law by my intended communications to the states, and that was all that concerned me. I live in Switzerland. I was not concerned with American law, which had failed demonstrably in any case. And what do you think would have happened to you if you had not been able to come to Switzerland and if you had used the same tactics in Milwaukee that you used here? This is an interesting question. The answer is highly revealing of the American legal system. Even my attempts to use the First Amendment, freedom of speech, a supposedly sacred right in the USA, resulted in intimidation of printers of my booklets, huge financial costs and threats to me. And even if my strategy had, in the end, been found within legal bounds in a courtroom, I probably would have been jailed until a trial. You do not mess with powerful U.S. lawyers without risk of ruin. In other words, you intentionally passed language to stay technically on the right side of the law. But that language was intended to cause concern for a judge and a police chief? That's correct. I went to the legal limit. The characters I exposed are hard-bitten and tough. If they had committed the illegal acts that I described without the improper protection of the legal system as privileged insiders, they might be in prison. It may be difficult for Swiss people to comprehend uh, that the USA has a legal system as dysfunctional as I describe, but jurists right up to the US Supreme Court have commented that the American legal system is badly broken. US media contains ample, frightening stories of injustice far worse than mine. With innocent people imprisoned for many years, even put to death and no one is held responsible, even when clear wrongdoing is demonstrated, people within the system remain resistant to being convicted, regardless of evidence. Did the pressure you exerted in this unorthodox way have the intended effect? Indeed it did, completely. The police chief relinquished evidence he had hidden for many years. I show this in the documentary film. This did not happen by accident. The pressure had the intended effect. Did you avail yourself of U.S. authorities again once the evidence was released by the police chief? There was a second chance to make things right here. Yes, the release of evidence gave me new hope. I tried to contact the district attorney in Milwaukee. He refused to speak to me. There was no incentive for him to provide a fugitive with a victory. But the circumstance that I was able to have evidence released that had been hidden by a police chief was valuable and allowed me to show evidence of police corruption. What frightens people most is the claim of violence against you. Do you have a history of violence, as the U.S. Marshals contend? No. That accusation is fabricated by U.S. Marshals in Milwaukee. Before I angered Milwaukee lawyers over the corrupt handling of a trial, and before I began publishing about that and its impact on my son, I had no criminal record whatsoever anywhere. Is what you are telling us verifiable? 
Easily. Criminal records are public records in USA. My Swiss record is also spotless and was provided more than once. Let's take a short break. When we return, we want to explore how this background impacted your life in Switzerland in part two of this podcast. <laughs> 